All right, so now we're going to get into physical mastery. And as we had mentioned in the yellow intellectual mastery modules, it is far more impactful to remove harmful inputs than it is to introduce healthy inputs. You have to plug the holes in the bottom of the boat if it's sinking. That's your first priority. So with that in mind, let's get into things you can cut out of your diet and lifestyle in order to achieve physical mastery. So in this module, we're going to discuss these items. And the reason is that these items, if you remove them and address them correctly, they will give you the highest ROI on your health and wellness. So now that we're going to discuss your health and wellness, here's a medical disclaimer. The content on these slides is for educational purposes only and does not substitute professional medical advice or consultations with healthcare professionals. The information provided is to be used by users at their own risk. Now, this is not just to protect me, it's to protect you. See, we are all different and may have different known or unknown underlying conditions, so move with caution. That said, let's get started with seed oils. You may have noticed people talking about this online, and even in scientific circles with Dr. Andrew Huberman and Dr. Paul Saladino, see, you will identify common food and lifestyle habits that negatively affect your body. You've heard to avoid seed oils, but now you're going to finally understand why. You will also learn a powerful heavy metal detox later on. So what are seed oils? Seed oils are oils that are derived from seeds. And the most common ones are canola oil, soybean oil, and sunflower seed oil. And a lot of people use these as cooking oils, which is very dangerous because they are full of omega-6 fatty acids, which our body, and this is very common with a bunch of different compounds, there is a natural and preferred ratio between two compounds and two chemicals. So for instance, for fats, you want to have a good ratio between your omega-3s and your omega-6s. You want more omega-3s. But seed oils are full of omega-6s and they're polyunsaturated fatty acids which is extremely inflammatory so i used to get insane breakouts and acne when i was cooking with seed oils i wasn't even thinking about it and and then driving along virginia and the united states i always remember seeing the mcdonald's trucks with this ridiculous campaign of this truck runs on biodiesel fuel that is recycled from our cooking oil they proudly display that the cooking oil they use is vegetable oil that can also be used to lubricate engines and machinery that is what you're putting in your body it is horrendous it comes out black and they have to bleach it and that is something that people are consuming because it's much cheaper than using animal fats which can actually animal fats can actually tolerate heat and it not only tastes better it's easier on your skin it's easier on your system it's not that harsh so getting rid of seed oils is one of the best things you can do for your health. It is so simple to do. Just substitute these super toxic seed oils with animal fats. And if you do want to cook with oils, cook it with coconut oil or olive oil if you want. Olive oil, extra virgin olive oil is actually, I wouldn't recommend heating it up too much. I would just do it really fast. But avocado oil is pretty good, but it's a much more superior option to cook with animal fats like butter, ghee, you know. And speaking of the acne that was caused by seed oils, your skin is your largest organ. So your skin is actually super fascinating. Light, your skin actually takes in sunlight and it converts it into vitamin D. You synthesize light. You're eating light, basically. You're, you're getting energy out of sunlight like a plant does, basically. That is fucking fascinating. Now, since we can accept that light is super powerful and has an effect on your health, there are certain ranges of light in the light spectrum that can cause different effects on your health. Now, some of you may be familiar with blue light, but let's discuss blue light in particular. See, blue light can disrupt your circadian rhythm because it comes out during the daytime when the sun is out and it communicates to your body through your eyes and your skin that it's daytime, it's time to be awake, time to be alert, that it's okay to release cortisol to keep you stressed and awake in the right times. But a lot of screens emit blue light. So if you're staying up late at night on your phone or on your laptop and you're just taking in blue light through your eyes, then you're effectively destroying your circadian rhythm. You're gonna stay up way much longer. You're not gonna get naturally sleepy. So if you're gonna do this, Companies like Raw Optics, which I'm not affiliated with, they've created blue light blocking glasses. You can also download blue light blocking filters on your laptop or on your phone that will naturally filter out the blue light so you can naturally get tired again when the sun goes down. See, we're supposed to rise and fall with the sun. That is what's natural for us. Something so simple like this 
has a massive effect on your sleep, which sleep is one of the cornerstones of health. A lot of people know the importance of nutrition and exercise, which is great, but I see true optimal health as a trifecta between nutrition, exercise, and sleep, because sleep is the ultimate recovery. That's when you actually build muscle. So you will not get restful sleep if you have blue light constantly getting pumped into your eyes. So I highly recommend you get blue light blocking glasses or you download a filter on your phone or your screen. Now let's discuss alcohol. So I'm recording this in the middle of calendar year 2023 and I actually stopped drinking since New Year's Eve of 2023. So it's been over six months of me not drinking a single drop of alcohol and it's honestly been really easy. You just have to have a very clear why. I get my energy from others. I'm an extrovert at heart. And so just being out there, I realized I didn't need to drink as much. Alcohol is catabolic. It will break down muscle protein synthesis. You will not get much out of your workouts. You'll get something, but your gains are basically disrupted. They're sabotaged by booze. Also, you almost get no REM sleep when you drink booze. So if you want to really optimize and prioritize your health, really start taking a look at your alcohol consumption and bring it down. And if you need help with this, I'll happily walk you through what I did to completely stop drinking alcohol this year. So I don't go out as often as I used to, but I still go out to enjoy a friend's birthday, for instance. And <laughs> I actually asked the bartender for milk. And I don't know what drink or cocktail calls for milk. I think it's a, a Moscow mule or something, but they have cartons of milk in the, in the in the clubs. So I'm in the middle of the dance floor with a carton of milk, just drinking it. And it's been a great icebreaker. I've had girls come up to me and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm just getting my protein, baby. You know how it is. Like it just, it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, you can always get a soda water. So like sparkling water, just throw a lime in it. People have no idea. People are relaxed at ease. You don't want to do what I did at first. So all of January and February, when I would go out, which wasn't much, I would just stand there with nothing in my hands. I looked like a serial killer. It was just not comfortable for anybody. So just have something in your hands. People don't ask questions. Just enjoy yourself. That's a quick hack. But I can definitely give you more tips on this if, if you want. Now, let's talk about the heavy metal detox. Because if you're consuming a lot of fish, for instance... Or if you're just living in a very industrial part of the city, for example, you highly likely have a lot of heavy metals in your blood and your system. And that leads to a less optimal functionality in your body. Your hormones and everything is a little bit out of whack. Heavy metals include things like manganese, lead, arsenic, chromium, and copper. It's important to know that some of these heavy metals are essential for healthy biochemical function. However, metals such as lead and chromium and arsenic can be toxic when ingested in small or large quantities. One of the biggest sources of these heavy metals happen to be large fish like swordfish and tuna because our oceans in the last few centuries have been completely contaminated by heavy metals. So if you do want to get those omega-3s, a quick cheat code is to consume caviar, like the eggs of the fish, because they don't have the meat that is full of these heavy metals. Tony Robbins, who I admire greatly, he went through a diet where he was consuming only swordfish and tuna. He wasn't consuming any red meat, and he is currently suffering from heavy metal poisoning. He goes through some months where he drops a lot of weight. It's actually very scary, so I don't want that for you. So there's a heavy metal detox protocol that you can do. Again, discuss this with your healthcare professional and provider to make sure your health is in a state where you can do this. But there's a protocol I would like to go over, which I did to clear myself of heavy metals. Now, this is known as a niacin detox. So niacin is also known as vitamin B3, and it's created naturally in your body. So the premise behind the niacin detox is to take a high dose of niacin paired with moderate to heavy exercise. This combination mobilizes and stimulates liposis or breakdown of fat. As the fats break down, the heavy metals and toxins stored inside your fat cells are released into your bloodstream, which you can then remove. If you don't remove it, you reabsorb the toxins back into your body. So it's very important for you to sweat it out. Another source of heavy metals is tap water. So the EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group, they have this website here, this link, where you can check the quality of your tap water. All you have to do is input your zip code and you can see how contaminated your water is. Now, you'll notice that there's activated charcoal in the bottom left in the pills there, the black pills. So 
when you take niacin, you're going to get this insane red flush in your face. It's going to release your histamines. It's going to activate your histamines, which is the basically an allergic reaction. You're going to get all itchy. That's fine. You need to take activated charcoal later on because that's what pulls the poison, the heavy metals from your blood, and it forces it into your stool so you can then shit it out. It's very important for you to remove this. So sweat and shit it out. Again, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide to the actual protocol, but this is what a niacin flush looks like you get extremely red. It's known as a floosh in like based circles, right? Again, it's gonna release, it's gonna activate your histamines. It's gonna feel like an allergic reaction. So I'm not allergic to anything that I'm aware of, but I get extremely red and I get the exact same reaction someone would if they were taking something they're allergic to. But again, it's perfectly safe. Make sure you check with your healthcare provider if it's right for you, but this is what you're gonna look like. Now, if a child were to accidentally swallow some detergent or some kind of chemical in the house, when you call the fire department, the firefighters usually provide the child with niacin to get this exact reaction. And then they flush it out with activated charcoal. The U.S. Army does this too during some gas practices. It's basically poison control. Now, here is the protocol step by step. Now, there are two main ways to eliminate heavy metals from your body. You got to sweat the toxins through the skin via exercise and sauna. And you can excrete them out the GI tract by binding them with activated charcoal. The niacin detox is one of the most powerful detox protocols out there. In fact, this is the same detox program that the 9-11 firefighters were put on to professionally and successfully treat their extreme overexposure of toxic dust from the World Trade Center buildings. When you take niacin, it induces a flushing effect that feels and looks like a sunburn. Reaction time is different for each person, but is normally expected in 5 to 10 minutes. Consult your doctor before attempting to make sure that this is right for you. Everyone is different. Now let's discuss chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors are special nerve cells that detect changes in the chemical composition of the blood and send information to the brain to regulate cardiovascular and respiratory functions. There are two major types, which are peripheral and central chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors play a major role in the senses of taste and smell. After years of avoiding unnecessary contact with strong chemicals in my food, skin, and clothes, I have developed a natural aversion to detergents, sunscreens, and processed food. Chemoreceptors detect the presence of chemicals. Thermoreceptors detect changes in temperature. And photoreceptors detect changes in light during vision which is why it's much harder to sleep in a room full of artificial light because your skin has photoreceptors on it. If you were to sleep outside on the beach, which I have, and the sun rises and starts to cover your feet and then your legs and then your stomach, your photoreceptors will communicate to you that it is daytime. So the chemoreceptor trigger zone or the CTZ is an area of the medulla oblongata, <laughs> water boy fans out there, that receives inputs from blood-borne drugs or hormones and it communicates with other structures in the vomiting center to initiate vomiting. Chemoreceptors are located in the sensory organs. They include taste buds located on the tongue, they're found in the olfactory bulb in the nose, and together they are responsible for the sense of taste and smell. Now enough of that science talk, let's get into practice. How can we use our newfound information on chemoreceptors in our daily lives? Through breath work. Again, these chemoreceptors are present in our lungs, in a respiratory system, and in our cardiovascular system in our hearts. Now, different types of breath work have different benefits and effects. They all merit deep exploration, but for this module, I will only cover the two I have direct experience with. Let's start with the Wim Hof method or Wim Hof breathing. So Wim Hof, also known as the Iceman, is a Dutch motivational speaker and extreme athlete. He's most famous for his ability to withstand low temperatures. He holds a Guinness World Record for swimming under ice and prolonged full-bodied contact with ice. And he holds a record for a barefoot half marathon in the ice and snow. He has popularized cold exposure, frequent cold exposure, and the breathing technique we're about to explore. He has been the subject of several medical assessments. In 2014, a paper published in PNAS, the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences, published a case study with a randomized group of 24 healthy and volunteers, 12 of whom were trained with the Wim Hof method. And here's a quote. In conclusion, we demonstrate that voluntary activation of the sympathetic nervous system results in epinephrine release and subsequent suppression of the innate immune response in humans in vivo. These results could have important implications for the treatment of conditions associated with excessive or persistent inflammation, such as autoimmune diseases. 
This is powerful. A lot of people in the scientific community were doubting the Wiff Hof method's effects on inflammation and thermoregulation, controlling your, your body's temperature, but he's proved them wrong every single time. He even wrote this book called The Wim Hof Method, which he discusses it in length. So the Wim Hof Method consists of the following. You're going to take in a strong inhalation through the nose, and you're going to let out a relaxed exhalation through the mouth. And you're going to repeat this for 30 breaths. And on the 30th breath, exhale to 90% and hold for as long as you can. And then you repeat this three times. It's that max hold after you breathe out that's very important. The second breathing technique, which I'm familiar with and I have direct experience with, is a pranayama. Pranayama is an ancient breath technique that originates from yogic practices in India. It involves controlling your breath in different styles and lengths. Bhastrika pranayama, or fire breathing, is one of the best and most popular pranayama yoga breathing exercises. It not only helps in increasing the blood circulation in the body, but it activates body channels. In this type of yoga, one sits in a cross-legged position and closes the eyes while keeping the spine straight. One should inhale and exhale at a fast rate. Inhale deeply and exhale forcefully for maximum effect. So the main purpose of this yoga is that the stomach should go inside. In this type of breathing technique, the yoga practitioner needs to remain consistent. So the goal of the pranayama is to strengthen the connection between your body and mind. According to research, pranayama can promote relaxation and mindfulness. It's also proven to support multiple aspects of physical health, including lung function, blood pressure, and brain function. In the other type of pranayama, brahmari, the practitioner closes the ears with the thumb and eyes are closed with the fingers. First, one chants om while exhaling. This is also known as humming bee breaths. This should go on until 5 to 10 minutes, and when it's over, one should repeat the cycle. The humming sound calms the mind and body naturally. It also helps in increasing concentration, alertness, and it relieves stress. I highly suggest you get into breath work or at least explore it on your own. It's something that we do every day, every moment. You don't even think about it, but it has huge effects on your emotions and your well-being. Now, as we discuss things to cut out and remove from our diets and lifestyles, there needs to be an emphasis on the difference between food and products. Again, it's more impactful to remove harmful things than adding good things, so let's start with the products. If you cannot find it in nature, it is not natural. I'm not trying to be a fun sucker. I'm not the type of person to just call attention to bad things without offering potential solutions. And each of these items has a healthier whole food alternative, which we'll get to later. But if your grandma didn't have access to it, have caution. And if you don't know what an ingredient is, avoid it. So here we have examples of products. You have Frito-Lays, you have Nutella, you have pizza, and you have Coca-Cola. Now I'm going to offer the whole food healthy alternatives to these, but I just needed you to see the difference. These are products. This is not food. This is food. And these are the healthy whole food alternatives. So instead of Frito-Lays, you have Potatoes, which is the main ingredient. You want potatoes? Just get potatoes, boil it, mash it up. Those are mashed potatoes. That is much healthier for you. And instead of Nutella, how about you get raw chocolate, real chocolate with no chemicals in it? In fact, if you want to support my good friends at River Sea, they have amazing chocolate from all over the world, mainly based out of Brazil. And instead of pizza, how about you get some goat cheese or Gouda cheese and enjoy it with figs or a fig jam, you know? And instead of Coca-Cola, you want to get your electrolytes in? You want something a bit tastier than just water? How about some coconut water? Like this is single ingredient stuff, guys. And it's natural whole foods. And I really hope you see the difference here between this and what you saw before. What you saw before were products. And just a quick tip when it comes to buying food in the supermarket, just stick to the perimeter of the supermarket. Don't get lost in the maze on the inside because inside are full of products. On the outside, that's where the food tends to be. That's where your butcher is and the meats, that's where they are. Your eggs, you know, and that's where the produce section is. So your vegetables and fruits, like just stick to the outside. Now, speaking of vegetables, let's discuss the whole rise in the carnivore and animal-based diets. Now, Dr. Paul Saladino, he discusses this at length. His background is that he's a doctor in medicine, right? But he also suffered from a lot of autoimmune diseases, one of which was eczema. And he wanted to treat himself, basically, and he wanted to help others. So he started experimenting with his food. And something he discovered, and he talks about in his book, The Carnivore Code, and on his podcast, The Fundamental Health Podcast, is that plants, they have a tricky way to protect themselves. See, unlike prey animals, plants do not have horns to defend themselves or legs to run away. 
They defend themselves from predators using defense chemicals. Some people who have more gut sensitivity or food allergies than others know this better than anyone. So I personally don't have any food allergies or food sensitivities, but after reading his book and learning about this, I've started to avoid cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower and food that has caused problems to people who have food sensitivities because I really don't need to put my body through this. There's also something known as bioavailability, which we'll get to later, but I actually wasn't absorbing all the minerals that were in the vegetables. Whereas with animal-based foods, I was actually absorbing everything, every single vitamin and mineral within that animal food I was actually taking into my body. A lot of calories and effort is expensed fighting back against these plant chemicals. So if you can avoid it, just avoid it. And remember when we discussed avoiding seed oils? Seeds are actually very toxic to humans. Since plants cannot move, they hitchhike by spores, pollen, and seeds. The bus that transports them can be wind, water, animals, and so on. Hitchhiking in animal digestive tracts can bring them to generally long distances. To illustrate this, I've included this image in the center of the latest Amy Schumer special. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so seeds have a coating right outside and it's all fiber. Now, why put your body through that strained effort when you can just eat food that you can absorb fully? By definition, you can't digest fiber. It's basically going in and out of your body. And there are two entire chapters dedicated on why eating fiber and needing fiber is a myth in his book, Carnivore Code. It's kind of like a, you build a tolerance to fiber. So if you need to shit more, you need to get more fiber to shit more, and it just becomes a dependency thing. So you just want to avoid that altogether. But I'll leave it with this. Technically, there is a workaround if you really want to eat your seeds and legumes. If that's you, I admire your insistence, so I'm going to give you this hack. Soak your seeds and beans in a wet paper towel until it sprouts. When a seed sprouts and germinates, it releases enzymes that break carbohydrates down into smaller molecules your body can digest more easily. The starch becomes sugar your body can absorb with less effort. Germination also makes digesting proteins and fats easier. But again, why eat an inferior food source if you have access to superior and more bioavailable food? Now, what I'm about to show you in the next slide might be considered weird or flat out strange. I know because the overwhelming majority of people I've shown this to have reacted in that way, but I'm nothing if not real and authentic with the people I care about. Remember, shame is optional, and I have zero shame in what I'm about to show you because this has helped me immensely, so it's my duty to share it with anyone else it could also help. Ready? Here it comes. Make a mood board. Make a health and wellness mood board, also a financial mood board. Take all these five dimensions of mastery and make mood boards for them okay so this mood board in particular i got from the tribe accelerator program from arlen moore so in the middle there i have the physique i want and i took it from frank colombo grego gallagher i even have one of my friends in there which is funny and this is the physique i want right so having a actual physical mood board or digital mood board is going to help you tremendously into getting closer to that goal, realizing it, you're manifesting it in a way. So one easy way to do this is to weaponize Instagram, make a folder and input things that motivate you. So on the left and right, I have uh, travel mood boards as well. And on the left, uh, at the top left is someone that received the ClickFunnels two comma club award. So he got a million dollars in sales. I want that exact same award. And this is something Arlen said to do, which is you get your face <laughs> and Photoshop it on top of all these bodies and all these people, because then you can kind of see it as real. And the universe does not like that imbalance between what you are visualizing and what you are wanting to manifest and the current reality. There's like an imbalance there. So it helps you. It, it conspires to get you there. I've seen this happen in real time. This is an absolutely insanely powerful thing you can do. So you want to manifest these goals, then you need to see them and you need to see them constantly. And a lot of people might hear that and think it's woo woo. But if you cannot even entertain the idea as a possibility, then you are guaranteeing it won't come through. See, I know I will own and drive a supercar. I just know it. I felt it. I've seen it. I visualize. I know it's going to happen. So if you take one of your friends, for instance, and you say, hey, do you see yourself driving a Lambo? Some of them will literally just laugh in your face. They will just it's completely out of the reality. They never even considered it. They're not even entertaining it. That person will 100% never drive a supercar. But the kid who can entertain the idea and let it in is much more likely to get the supercar. Do you understand? There's a subtlety there, but it's 
huge. So this is concept is explored more in a book called Psycho Cybernetics. So you can actually create your reality, but the first step is to actually entertain it as possible. So the same thing goes with your physique and that whole mood board is to just plant seeds and shatter walls of self-limiting beliefs that tell you that it's impossible. Of course it's possible. And we're gonna cover psycho cybernetics a little bit more in the spiritual modules, but it's a powerful, powerful idea. Now, we can't go through a cutting module in the physique mastery without discussing fasting. Now, I've been fasting intermittently for about four years now, and one of the biggest benefits I've noticed is that I have complete control over my hunger. So usually your body has these rises in ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, around the times of day where you usually eat. Now, I've cut out breakfast completely for four years now. I don't eat breakfast. I just eat lunch and I eat dinner. And I eat lunch and dinner, those two foods, within an eight-hour window. And so I fast for 16 hours a day, sometimes 18 hours, but that tight window. So I usually eat from 12 to 8 or 12 to 6, and that's just how I've lived my life. So what happens when you're fasting for that long is that you go through a process known as autophagy. Auto is self, phagy is eat, so you're eating yourself. But I'm also building muscle. How is that possible? Well, autophagy is you're eating the garbage. You're eating the, the things that are broken. You're eating malignant cells, deformed cells, fat, things that are of no use to your body. Your body, now that it's not digesting anything, it can focus on cleaning up your body and things that it doesn't need. And so it can focus and finally do that. So here's a quick timeline of what happens in your body when you fast up to 54 hours. Now, the longest fast I've ever done is just over three days. I did an 80 hour fast. So I actually documented it in my stories. Here's a screenshot from day two. And I was peeing on ketone strips. So I can see the ketones being released in my blood from my liver. And that has a slew of benefits too. I highly suggest you explore fasting. Now I was water fasting. So I was drinking water with salt in it. So just still zero calories, but I did just over three days. I did 80 hours and I highly suggest it as a good restart. Now you don't want to make this an habitual thing, like doing it more than six times a year. Like that's a lot, but it's a good reset for your system. Now, intermittent fasting, where you're fasting for 16, 18 hours a day, that's something you do every single day. In fact, that's something we all used to do as humans every single day. Now, some people are under the false belief that if they don't eat every single day, they will starve. I'm going to tell you the story of a young 27-year-old Scottish man in the 1960s just to break that belief if you still hold it. Of course, this is an extreme example, but it goes to serve that none of you are really starving. So all of us are holding fat in our bodies, right? It's like a camel's hump. It's just there for emergencies. Now, some of you may wonder, what is the world record for fasting? The world record for fasting belongs to Angus Barbieri, who's a Scottish man who fasted for 382 days from June 1965 to July 1966. So just over a year, he had minimal calories, almost no calories. He lived on tea, coffee, soda water, and vitamins. He lost 276 pounds from that fast. He started this fast weighing 456 pounds and ended weighing 180 pounds. So he lost 126 kilos. So you are not starving, okay? A lot of you are carrying a lot of calories around you. I personally suggest everyone to explore fasting, but of course you should consult a healthcare professional beforehand. Now, there's other types of fast you should do. You should fast from alcohol, explore that. Fast from legumes like peas and beans. Fast from plastic, especially plastic water bottles and plastic that wraps around your food, that leaches into your food. And even your skin. A lot of people wear a lot of polyester and polyester underwear, which is unbelievable because you're leaching plastic, microplastics into your skin, which is insane. Also, we want to fast from heavy metals and use water filters if you can and fast from blue light after dark, like use a red light filter and blue light blocking glasses. My theory is that in 40 years, we're going to talk about plastic like we currently talk about lead. Our parents used to play with lead toys and breathe in lead paint, but now we know it's toxic. Today, we are wrapping our food and drinks with plastic that we know will break down into microplastics. Our kids will think that it's insane. But you don't have to wait until it's mainstream to avoid plastic. You can just start now. All right, so let's discuss your homework for this module. So you're going to upload a picture to the Discord of at least one of the following. Your ancestral dinner plate. Make sure at the very minimum it's not cooked using seed oils. And it's very important to know how to feed yourself in, in general. So being able to cook for yourself is huge. But make sure for this one that it's animal-based, that it has animal-based products on it. Also, 
screenshot your proposed fast on your calendar. Are you going to do a two day fast? Are you going to fast from a certain type of food that you've always been eating without thinking? Also for the brave out there, send us a picture of your face during a niacin floosh when you're all red and you take niacin. Like that is going to incentivize a lot of people to detox themselves from these heavy metals. <laughs> your first niacin floosh is always a great experience. So I would love to see this. So an example submission would be someone saying, hey guys, look, I look like the red skull. <laughs> also, I'm fasting from booze for the month of April. Also, here's my plate. It's my first time ever trying beef liver. Let's fucking go. So let's make this fun. I hope you've learned something useful. And again, remember, it's much more impactful to remove harmful things than to just pile on good things. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.